Welcome again in my course Power Electronics Application in Power Systems. In the last uh, three lectures, I am, I am discussing the applications of static bar compensator in enhancing various uh, capacity or on enhancing the, uh, the performances of power systems, right. And in the last uh, couple of lectures, I basically discuss how SBC can be used in enhancing the transient stability of power system. Then the next application is uh, the SBC can also be used in damping of power system oscillations. Now in order to understand what is damping of power system oscillation, you have to also understand what do you mean by power system oscillation and why do we uh, uh, require, why do you uh, need the damping uh, in a power system that is very important. So, in this particular lecture, I will discuss how an SPC uh, be used in damping power system oscillation. Also, I, I will discuss uh, what is the significance of the power system damping and or rather power system oscillation damping and uh, how can we do so by using a SBC control. Okay. So, let us proceed. So, today's uh, lecture the theme or the goal is to understand the role of SBC in power system damping. All right. So, we will understand the power system damping. Now, uh, before I discuss, let us write some important point about this power system oscillations or rather power system damping. So, first of all, this power system damping power system oscillation damping rather to be more precise is an important aspect important aspect for stable operation ok. Then the second important uh, point is that uh, this negative damping can cause instability this is also another important point and third point is to damp power system oscillations oscillation we need a damping torque, a damping torque and it plays an important role important role in deciding the line loading okay so these are the three important points which which provides you the significance of power system oscillation damping okay now we have not talked about so far uh, how it is done, but I am trying to give you an idea that why it is so significant uh, in power system. 
In fact, I will uh, draw a diagram which will further illustrate you how it is uh, crucial uh, to decide the loading of the uh, transmission line. Suppose I have uh, different, let us draw different power flow limits in transmission systems. In transmission systems ok. So, if if I just represent in a kind of bar chart then it would be something like this. So, there are various limits in which decides the power flow in transmission limit uh, transmission lines or transmission systems one of them is thermal limit, thermal limit. Suppose this is the thermal limit, this arrow is representing or this bar gum is representing the thermal limit uh, of the of a typical transmission line. Then the next limit is the steady state stability limit, steady state stability limit is usually lower than the thermal limit. So, this is steady state stability limit. It is also represented in terms of megawatt. Okay. Then the next uh, limit is transient stability limit, which already I discussed in the last few lectures which represents the angle uh, till which we, we can load the power system transmission line. So, suppose uh, this is the transient stability limit. That is also in megawatt. So, then the next limit uh, exist is the damping limit. Electrical damping limit. Okay, that is also in megawatt. Now, if you uh, this bar gum or bar chart characterize the different power flow limit in a typical transmission line. Suppose, uh, if I uh, give a tentative numerical value that thermal limit of a transmission line let us say is uh, 1000 megawatt. Okay. What do you mean by thermal limit? Thermal limit is decided by the conductor size of the transmission line. Okay. So, it is big, uh, based upon the uh, maximum current carrying capacity of the transmission lines and it used to be much higher than the other limits or in fact, we can say that a typical transmission line is uh, designed uh, to, to uh, withstand uh, a given amount of power flow and that is what the thermal limit. And uh, this limit is primarily decided by the conductor size, conductor type, conductor configuration and uh, conductor material okay, using which the transmission line is constructed. However, even if uh, a, a, a thermal limit of a typical transmission li line is 1000 megawatt, it is not possible to allow the power flow through this transmission line uh, up to 1000 megawatt because there are several other limits which further decide that how much should be the safe or acceptable power flow without losing the stability of the uh, system. So, next limit is steady state stability limit already I, I discuss about this. This corresponds to delta theoretical value which is equal to pi by 2 and a typical value for this particular transmission line which is having thermal limit 
of 1000 megawatt would be much lower maybe it is suppose I consider it is 900 megawatt. I am giving a tentative indicative value that does not mean that it, it has to be like that only, but uh, this gives an idea that stability limit is much lower than the thermal limit of a transmission line which means that or which implies to the fact that even if we can load or you can allow the power flow of a typical transmission line based upon the conductor configuration to 1000 megawatt, we cannot allow the power flow up to 1000 megawatt because steady state stability limit is lower than that. Okay. Then we have transient stability limit, it decides that how much should be the acceptable flow of power keeping it keeping it uh, the consideration that it would be able to withstand a major disturbance like transient fault. Okay. These things already I discussed. So, suppose if your uh, steady state stability limit of the same line is 900 megawatt then transient stability limit can be lower than that. Let us consider it is 800 megawatt and again this uh, numerical values does not have any idea does not have any sense apart from that it gives a relative values of the uh, different limits. Okay. Then the next uh, limit is basically electrical damping limit which will be further lower than this transient limit let us consider it 700 megawatt. So, this gives you, you an idea that even if a transmission line which is constructed and designed to accept this power flow of 1000 megawatt effectively uh, this electrical damping limit decides that how much should be the allowable amount of flow of power that is eventually much lower than the your uh, thermal limit. So, that is what the main essence of this fact. Okay. So, so, electrical damping limit is the only uh, most uh, crucial limiting factor in deciding that how much power should be allowed to flow in a typical transmission line. Okay. Now, to, to uh, uh, show you uh, how this damping uh, is decided or how the damping is uh, important for uh, a particular transmission line. Uh, also, um, I will show you how an SPC placement can improve the power system oscillation damping. Okay. So, let us start with a simple transmission line or a single machine infinite bus system where this is connected to a electrical generator and this is connected to infinite bus. This is generator this is infinite bus. In power system terminology we call it single machine infinite bus system and this is what the transmission line. This is what the transmission line and let us consider voltage at this bus is V1 at an angle delta and this infinite bus voltage is V2 at an angle 0. This is representation of a short line. So, it is modeled with its reactance which is x. Okay. So, therefore, the power flow through this line, the power flow through this line is P is equal to V1 V2 divided by x sin delta. Okay. Now, if we assume these uh, voltages are regulated at the both end, you know that infinite bus the voltage will not uh, change that is what the uh, you know definition of infinite bus. So, we assume that numerator remain constant and x is the design parameter it will also remain constant. So, p is proportional to this uh, sin delta. So, okay. so, line loading basically depends upon the angular difference between the two buses one is sending end bus this another is receiving end bus. Okay. And if we go back and write the swing equation for this system. So, what would be the swing equation? So, again I said that swing equation is something which is taught in basic power system course. 
and we take this idea also uh, when we uh, discuss this equality criteria and uh, this is I assume that you know. Okay. So, therefore, the swing equation is as we know m d 2 del delta d t 2 this is already I have discussed plus del p is equal to 0. Okay. Now, we, we represent this p, del p means small uh, change of this power and p is uh, the function of only delta, uh, p is the function of delta, okay. p is function of delta. So, therefore, del p, del p is basically representation of del p del delta multiplied by del delta. So, if we write it over here, then as you know what is del p del delta, we discuss a lot regarding this in the last couple of lectures. This is basically the rate of change of power flow with respect to the angle delta and that is called synchronizing coefficient of the line. So, this can be written as m d 2 del delta d t 2 plus the synchronizing coefficient del p del delta multiplied by del delta is equal to 0. Now, if you uh, just convert it to Laplace domain, if we convert it to Laplace form, if we convert into Laplace form, I, I will again assume that you know what is Laplace transform. Then uh, this is a second order differential equation and if we convert it to Laplace domain, it will represent the characteristic equation which is similar to s square plus omega naught square is equal to 0. Okay. Now, here where s will lie because we know that d p d delta will has to be positive uh, for a stable operation. So, he s is basically representation of plus minus j omega naught. So, which uh, means that here this pole of this characteristic equation, this is what the characteristic equation that we will get from this swing equation by converting it to Laplace domain. And this uh, root of the characteristic equation is will lie to the imaginary axis. It means that the system will be marginally stable. So, this means the system will be marginally stable. And if we plot this uh, variation of del delta over here, then what we will see that del delta will be oscillating uh, without converging to a particular value value or without being 0. So, it will be oscillating like this. This is will be del delta plot with respect to t. So, it will not come out to be a given value or uh, it will not come out to be 0. So, that is what will happen if we consider a single machine infinite bus. Uh, here our assumptions are assumptions are we have lossless lossless system we have short line model. Okay. So, if we have a lossless system effectively there is no damping. So, it is a case of uh, undamp operation. Those who are uh, who have learned this uh, basic control system course they know what is uh, the damping of a second order system. So, roots of the characteristic equation lie only on the imaginary axis, then it is a case of marginally stable and also it is a case of undamped system. So, there is no damping of the system and this uh, del delta will keep on oscillating. So, that is what the thing is. Okay. Now, we will see that how uh, this uh, SVC placement may enhance the damping. So, we will see the single machine infinite bus system with SVC placement. Single machine infinite bus system with SVC placed, let us say, at the midpoint. At the midpoint of the line. Okay. Now, let us redraw this 
single machine infinite bus system here we assume this is generator bus this is what our transmission line this is infinite bus system and this is where we have this SVC connected ok. So, this voltage is again we consider V at an angle delta V 1 at an angle delta this voltage let us consider V 2 at an angle 0 this voltage you consider V m at an angle del m ok. Now, when we have this system then we know the power flow equation equation will be for this system for this system will be here you also assume that this is midpoint this is midpoint. So, the reactance of midpoint to the sending end side is x by 2 and reactance from the uh, midpoint to the receiving end side also x by 2. So, the power flow equation will be P compensated why we write P compensated because it is a SPC compensated line. So, therefore, the uh, this equation of this power flow will get revised. So, it will be P compensated which is equal to V 1 or rather I should write V 2 V 2 V m divided by x y 2 then sin del m. Okay. Now, you see that let us consider that uh, V 2 is regulated and if it is infinite bus system we will assume that V 2 is constant x y 2 is the line reactance it is also a constant quantity. So, therefore, but this V m we can vary. So, we have two option uh, in controlling the SVC number one is that uh, we can keep V m constant irrespective of the loading number two or option 2 would be uh, we can vary the Vm according to the uh, this uh, line loading or according to the variation of delta. So, we have two options or two cases or two options rather I say number 1 let keep Vm is equal to constant. Then if you have so, then this P comp will be function of only del m. So, in that case uh, your uh, situation would be same as that of we have seen in the last page here. So, this corresponds to the same equation uh, and same property of this and this will correspond to a clear case of undamped system. So, therefore, if we do so. Uh, if we keep this V m constant irrespective of the line loading. So, then overall system will be undamped that means what do you mean by undamped system that means there will be no damping in the system as discussed before. Okay. Now, the second option is that we will vary this V m. So, V m is variable according to line loading. If it is so, then P comp will be function of this V m as well as del m. Okay. So, now let us see what type of case this would be. Okay. So, in that particular case, the small perturbation of this P comp will be equal to del F del V m multiplied by del V m plus del F del del m multiplied by del del m. Okay. Now, or rather I should not use this F, I should uh, I can write this also del p comp del v m and del p comp del del m. Now, you can see this basically represents this 
this del p com del del m it represents the synchronizing coefficient synchronizing power coefficient and we have uh, determined this value of del p comp del del uh, in the last lecture this. So, this basically represents uh, del p del delta that is for the synchronizing power coefficient for SPC compensated line and which is uh, different than the uncompensated line that is what I want to say over here. Now, if we can uh, however, this is known to us the synchronizing power coefficient is known to us. Now, if we keep this del V m uh, 0 that means, V m constant then it will be a case of undamped system this term would be completely 0 then, but we are not interested to doing so we are interested to vary this V m according to the line loading in this option 2. So, therefore, what we will do is that we will keep that uh, this del p comp del V m as it is and we will vary this del V m such that it will be equal to k some constant k then del del m del t. Okay. Then the rest of the equation would be same that is del p comp del del m multiplied by del del m. So, here we are varying we are varying the meet point voltage meet point voltage such that del V m is equal to some constant. Basically, what it is doing we are varying this del V m proportionally with the rate of change of del del m. Okay. We are varying this del V m proportionally to del del m del t and this proportionality constant is k. Okay. Now, we will use this del p comp equation in the swing equation of the SPC compensated line. So, let us write the swing equation again. Of SPC compensated line. So, what we will get? We will be replacing this 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 part in particular del p part with this whatever expression we have got right now. So, what we will get is m del 2 del del m d t 2 plus this this part we will write del p comp del v m multiplied by k multiplied by del del m del t plus this part del p comp del del m del del m is equal to 0. Now, this is what our swing equation. Now, if you convert it to Laplace domain, if you convert it to Laplace domain lab by uh, Laplace transformation, then what you get? This is also a second order differential equation, but the characteristic equation of this particular uh, swing equation for SPC compensated line for having this uh, this V m variable according to the line loading would be something like this a square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square is equal to 0. Now, when you have this this is a uh, you know that uh, a characteristic equation for a standard second order system with damping. Without damping this part was 0, this uh, zeta was basically 0 
okay, and zeta is called the damping ratio which is uh, well known those who have uh, done the basic control system course. Okay. Now, omega n is your natural frequency of oscillation. Now, here uh, if you just compare this equation with that equation, then omega n would be equal to root over this del p comp, del p comp that is synchronizing coefficient for SBC compensated line okay, divided by 1 upon m. Okay. So, that is what this uh, omega n is. So, this is natural frequency of oscillation. Uh, this basically depends upon the m is constant we know and it is basically depends upon the synchronizing power coefficient of the line. Now, then what will be this uh, 2 zeta omega n? 2 zeta omega n will be equal to this okay, because it is the coefficient of uh, this, this, this term which brings this S term over characteristic equation. So, we can write uh, 2 zeta omega n, 2 zeta omega n is equal to del p comp del v m multiplied by this k, where k is the proportionality constant we consider because we are here interested to vary this v m. What is v m? v m is the midpoint voltage of the SBC compensator light that is the voltage at this point. So, therefore, we are interested to vary this according to the rate of change of del delta, okay? uh, rate of change of uh, del delta. So, therefore, this is basically equal to 2 zeta omega n, where zeta is equal to zeta is damping ratio, zeta is equal to 1 upon 2 omega n, then this k multiplied by del p comp del v m. Okay. So, this can be uh, you know we already know what is this omega n natural frequency of oscillation this is. So, we can replace it by this. So, 1 upon 2 1 upon m then the synchronizing power coefficient that is del p comp del del m multiplied by this k del p comp del v m. Okay. So, this is what the damping ratio and uh, by doing so, we can provide the appropriate damping to the system. So, this zeta will bring the appropriate damping to the system. Now, as compared to the del delta plot, suppose this is the del delta plot, del delta plot with respect to t. Suppose this is what the del delta plot for undamped system. This is for undamped system, undamped system, which already I explained that uh, if we consider lossless line. So, it is eventually similar to an undamped system, but of course, in practical power system or practical transmission line, there is certain amount of losses fortunately, which causes certain amount of damping as well. But if we consider this is very less, then uh, by using this SPC control, we can provide or we can control the damping. And therefore, the plot of this SPC compensated line uh, the plot of this del delta with respect to t for SBC compensated line would be somewhat like this. It is a damped plot, damped oscillation and it will be, it will go to 0 up, up to a certain point. Okay. So, this is what the plot of uh, SBC compensated line. Okay. That is the main essence of the fact that I want to establish here. Okay. Now, let us write the important remark what we get from this whole analysis important remarks. Number 1. So, SVC with 
appropriate or I should write first the first is the lossless short transmission line. line shows a case of undamped system, undamped system. Okay. Number two, an SVC compensated line line is of course uh, short and lossless will also will also act as a undamped system if we keep voltage at the SPC bus, here we assume that SPC is placed at the midpoint of the line. So, here it implies to the midpoint voltage. Okay. So, uh, we keep the voltage at the SPC bus remained constant or uh, we keep the voltage at the SPC bus constant irrespective of line loading. This is an important remark. So, in fact, uh, in my in our previous study, uh, we have uh, considered that the SPC is responsible to hold the midpoint voltage constant. Now, we are deviating from that. In fact, uh, we, we have to deviate when there is a dynamic uh, uh, condition, when there is a dynamic situation like this and uh, during that time, uh, this SVC should modulate the midpoint voltage according to the requirement, thereby it can provide the appropriate damping. So, the third remark is that an SVC with voltage modulation instead of keeping this voltage constant, this voltage modulation at the SVC bus can enhance damping of power system oscillation. This is what we have uh, shown in this, this particular analysis. This they can bring this damping ratio and uh, this should be suitably done and this should be suitably designed to control. So, that SBC can effectively modulate this SBC bus voltage, so that it can effectively damp the power system oscillation. Now, the fourth question is this is an additional control requirement, control requirement of SPC and it is known as auxiliary control or power 
not showing damping control so this is very important point to be understood that uh, this feature of SPC provides you additional uh, control requirement that is called auxiliary control or power swing damping control whereas the main purpose of SBC is to control or regulate the voltage at which it is placed. Here we in the whole study in everywhere we consider SBC is placed at the midpoint of the line. Right? Now it may not be placed at the midpoint of the line, but wherever it is placed its primary role is to uh, regulate the voltage at that particular bus. Okay? However, this is what the main control functionality and I will discuss how it is to be done in the next few lectures. However, uh, apart from that SBC also needs to provide some auxiliary control action. Uh, one of them is to damp uh, this, this power system oscillation or power swing damping control. This is an additional task of SBC and that usually it provides like a auxiliary control action. Okay. Now, you have to also understand how this SVC can provide uh, this, this auxiliary control or power swing damping control. So, how an SVC can provide auxiliary or power swing damping control. So, I will finish this lecture by answering this question that how an SBC can provide power swing damping control. Okay? You understand at this point I believe that SBC can provide power swing damping control by modulating the voltage at the bus at which it is placed. Okay? So, here we consider that SBC is placed at the midpoint of the transmission line. So, it, to, it has to modulate the midpoint voltage and by doing so it can provide the appropriate damping. Now, the question is uh, modulation of voltage means you have to sometimes momentarily increase the voltage at the midpoint or sometime you have to uh, momentarily decrease the voltage of the midpoint. Now, the question is when should we increase the voltage, when should we decrease the voltage. In order to understand that you should have a idea of the basic power system that usually this rate of change of del delta what it is basically uh, representing? This is basically representing the rate of change of frequency of the uh, this particular voltage uh, of the system. So, it is basically the change of the change of frequency. Now, the question is what do you mean by that? Ideally, we, we believe that the frequency of the power system will always remain constant and in India it will always uh, remain constant at 50 hertz. But if you go and uh, see and monitor the frequency of this uh, voltage that the sub, uh, grid is providing to you, then you can see it is ob eventually never be constant to 50 hertz throughout the day, rather it will always vary. Now, why it will vary? it will vary primarily because of the load and generation imbalance. Sometimes our uh, generation uh, is not adequate enough to supply all the load demand. This happens when we have a scorching summer. Okay? So, uh, during that time uh, we use many of the air conditioning load and all the other uh, different types of load to cool ourselves. Uh, uh, so, therefore, the load demand eventually in India during summer is very high, during uh, April, May, June, uh, July uh, very high. Okay? So, during that time this situation happens when the generation is not adequate to the load. So, therefore, uh, what would be the consequence? Then the frequency will fall. Okay? So, when it is happening the frequency will fall. 
but eventually uh, during uh, this midnight if we have a sufficient generation and our load demand is uh, not as high as our generation is during that time frequency will rise. So, frequency is certain quantity which is always changing throughout the day. Okay. Now, uh, the question is uh, when uh, sometimes there will be positive so day left the deviation is the it is basically the change of the frequency sometimes it will be positive and day left sometimes will be negative. Now, when this day left is positive what does it mean actually? This means that there is a over speeding of the generator. Okay. So, the frequency is increasing that means obviously uh, we have a surplus generation than the load. Uh, so, therefore, the generator is over speeding. So, during that moment of that time what essentially that uh, this role of the SPC would be it will increase the flow of the power. So, when it is positive so SVC will increase the power flow power flow that is P comp how it is possible by momentarily this is a very momentary operation by momentarily increase Vm. You can see from this particular expression if Vm is momentarily increased then Pm will also increase. Now, if Pm uh, this uh, P comp increases that means uh, power flow through the transmission line will also increase that means the torque the, in fact you ha I hope that you know that there are two torque acting uh, in a um, the typical uh, synchronous generator one is load torque another is this mechanical torque. So, here load torque will increase. So, uh, mechanical torque was high and that is why this del f was positive and if we can increase the load torque we can balance eventually that and we can mitigate this uh, uh, this this del f we can arrest this del f and that is eventually possible by momentarily increase the vm now how can sbc uh, momentarily increase the voltage at the midpoint so you know sbc has two uh, you know mode of operation one is inductive mode of operation one is capacitive mode of operation so when sbc operate its full inductive mode it momentarily reduce the voltage level and when it acts as a full conduction mode at in the capacitor region or capacitive zone it can momentarily increase the voltage level right. So, uh, by doing so it can arrest this del f similarly uh, positive del f similarly when we have a negative del f. So, what will be the role of the SBC? So, SBC will decrease the power flow P comp by momentarily decrease this Vm and simply by doing so SBC can arrest this negative uh, f that is the negative change of the frequency and this is how this uh, SBC can uh, also be used in regulating the frequency of the system and uh, it can eventually also provide uh, this damping to the system. So, this is how it, it eventually uh, this this arrest the rate of change of frequency or the change of the frequency. Okay. So, this is all about this. Now, with this I have completed this 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 important application of SBC that is how it is uh, dam this power system oscillation. One thing is only left to us that is how SBC is used a voltage control of power system which is the main function main function of this SVC and this I will discuss in very detail in the next 2 3 lectures. Okay. So, till then uh, thank you very much for attending this course once again thank you very much.